Hi everyone, I'm Sean, the creator behind Celestial Ambience. I've been creating relaxing space music and animations for this channel, and with this video I thought I would offer a behind the scenes look into how I create this content. All the content is created with my computer, and you can see my setup behind me here, it's pretty minimalist. Uh, my tower's on the floor, I'll put the specs on screen, and uh, aside from that I've just got some headphones, an audio interface, and a MIDI keyboard. Everything is done in the box with computer software, and so to that point, now we're in the box. For the purpose of this video, what I'll do is I'll break down how I made the animations and music for two of the videos on this channel that I think are more or less representative of the channel as a whole. I'll also talk a bit about my general approach to creating this kind of content. All of the animations for the channel are made with Adobe After Effects. My goal with each animation is to create a relaxing long shot that captures the stillness of space while having enough movement to be interesting to watch. Here I've loaded the project file for the moon music animation. It's a pretty simple composition with only two elements, the stars and the moon. I'll turn the moon off so that we can focus on talking about the stars first. The way that they were done was I have two separate layers in this project file um, that are both creating stars. One of them is called Stars Particle, and the other is called Stars Particle Blue. I, I wanted to have two slightly different shades, although to be honest, if I zoom in, I don't think the blue actually turned out very clear as I don't personally see it. I digress though. Um, the way it's done is each of these layers is a CC particle world effect. A particle world effect emits particles, which you can have animate in a variety of ways. I programmed these particles to animate starting from the bottom of the composition and slowly moving up over time with something of a unique twist. It took me a long time to figure out how I was going to do it, but I wanted to have a parallax effect to the stars in this animation. In other words, I didn't want all the stars to be moving at the exact same speed as if it were just a JPEG of stars in the background that's moving up. I wanted there to be some actual depth to the animation, with different stars moving um, f faster than others. The way I did that was by adding some depth along the z-axis for the particle emitter, having some of the particles closer to the camera and some of them farther away from the camera, the ones in the background move slower. It's a very subtle effect, just like it would be in real life. To create the moon, I used a, a popular plugin called VC Orb. It allows you to add a 3D sphere to a scene and apply a texture to it, and then I animated it to rotate slowly over the course of the composition. I also applied some color correction to the moon, and then I used a parallel light to create the classic crescent moon effect. Next here I've loaded the project for the Discovery animation. This is one of the Starfill style of animations, so I wanted to touch on how this is done. Um, there's three main elements to it. I'm going to turn off the top layer here so that we can see it more clearly. Um, so on top of everything there's two different layers of star fields. The way it's done is with an effect called Starburst. It creates animated stars that drift by the camera. Um, one of the layers has a lot of small stars that move by slowly and the other one has larger stars that drift by quickly. Uh, aside from that, we've got some additional stars that live in the nebula, and I've also applied a ripple effect to make the nebula look somewhat animated. Uh, if I remove those stars and the ripple, all we're left with is the nebula. The way this is done is with a fractal noise effect, and then I applied some color to the noise to create the two different shades. Uh, in behind the nebulas, I've also got um, just a bit of a glow layer to create some additional light for the scene. But if I turn everything back on, so this is how it all looks, and then on top of the whole composition, I added a lens effect to add some slight optical distortion. 
And then there's also a light burst effect I used to just sort of blend the whole thing together. All of the music for Celestial Ambience is produced in FL Studio. I use a variety of virtual instruments like Omnisphere, Nexus, Spire, and Serum. My goal with each piece of ambient music is to create a constantly evolving melodic soundscape that maintains a consistent energy level for the duration. Here I've loaded the project file for Luna, the music from the Moon music video. And there's a couple of main things I'd like to quickly touch on with this one. Um, the goal with this track was to create a simple melody of which the sonic characteristics would change slightly over time. And I also wanted to add a white noise wind soundscape. So I'll quickly explain how I did both of those. So I'm going to hit play. Right now we're just playing the main melody. Um, the patch itself is a custom pad sound that I designed in Spire. It's a basic sine wave pad sound that covers two octaves with some white noise added in for some extra relaxing qualities. Now the way I program the sound to evolve over time is twofold. Um, it, it plays a fairly simple MIDI sequence, which as you'll see here is 96 bars long. And once it finishes playing the sequence, it then plays through again with some additional instrumentation. So if I skip ahead here to bar 97 and unmute the other tracks, it, it plays the melody again, but with four extra instruments. I'm going to drag up the mixer so you can see. Um, one of the instruments is panned pretty hard right, another instrument is panned pretty hard left so that when they come in, you can still hear the original sound down the center with extra instruments on the sides. And then there's an additional uh, choir sound as well. So each time the melody repeats, it'll play through first with the original synth, and then with the extra instruments, and then just the original synth again, and then with the extra instruments again, and so on and so forth. Now, an additional way I program this to evolve over time is if I skip ahead to bar, what is this, 190, there's one more instrument that fades in here. This is an instrument of Ogun. It's a FL Studio synth that's good for making bell sounds. You can't hear it super clearly right now, but if I go like this here, so when the melody kicks in again the third time, you can hear this additional bell sound that just adds additional texture to the melody. Now, something that I want to point out here is that I didn't want the bell sound to be going constantly for the whole song once it kicks in. So what I've done here is I've used a peak controller, which is generating a, an LFO. And the LFO is linked to this mute plugin here. So basically, as this LFO goes up and down, you can see this line here shows the value of the LFO. The mute for the bell sound goes up and down, meaning that it will fade in and out over time. So in this manner, I can have, if I go back to the beginning of the song, it'll start playing with the original synth. Then when it repeats, it has four additional instruments to add extra character. And then later on in the song, we add the bell sound here, which is programmed to fade in and out automatically for the entire song. Because of all of this and the random nature of the bell sound coming in and out, it means that even though the melody is repeating, the music itself, the actual audio, technically speaking, doesn't repeat. It's going to constantly change for the whole 10 hours. The other thing I'd like to touch on is how I created the wind sounds. It might not be immediately obvious, but I didn't take a microphone outside and record wind. This is made all in FL Studio with probably the most basic synth of all time, three times OS. Um, the way this is done here, I'm gonna hit play. 
and I'm going to mute these in, so we're just hearing the wind. So, the wind sound is made with white noise. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with white noise, but just to uh, make it really clear, I'm going to turn off the processing for a moment. And let's uh, turn off the other instances of wind. I've got a few going. So, white noise is essentially just TV static. Um, what I've done with this, though, is I've applied another LFO, kind of like with that bell sound before. So if I turn the processing back on, you'll hear now that the wind sound is kind of high, and now it's going low, and then it's going to start to go high again. The way this is done is with a, a bandpass filter. So what a bandpass filter does is it removes the low frequency and high frequency sound, and it just lets the white noise right where the filter is programmed to come through. Now, the filter cutoff is going up and down over time because it's linked to an LFO again. Um, if I wanted to, I could speed up the LFO, and the wind sound will go up and down faster. Or I can slow it down, and the wind sound goes up and down slower. Mind you, you're not noticing it super clear at the moment, as there is some additional processing. Oh, here it is. There's a reverb on the wind. I'm going to turn that off. Oh, and there's that bell sound again. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, now you can hear it clearly. Uh, the wind sound's going up and down. If I speed up the LFO, you'll hear it quicker. This is an effect you'll usually hear in, like, EDM. But, yeah, here I've used it to create wind. Now, I didn't want it to be a super simple wind soundscape with just one of these going up and down. So, I actually created one, two, three, four, five different instances of white noise, each with a LFOs moving at different speeds so that there's a many different layers of the wind that are going up and down seemingly randomly so that it hopefully comes across as somewhat realistic. So yeah, um, because I have the melody constantly evolving over the 10 hours and the wind is constantly evolving over the 10 hours, there's literally no loop point. Even though the patterns technically repeat, the soundscapes don't. Okay, so this video is getting to be longer than I intended, so I think we're going to stop here for now. If you watched all this, thank you for being interested in the content that I make here. It means a lot to me. Hopefully it was interesting getting a behind-the-scenes look at how I make these videos. For now, this is Sean with Celestial Ambience, signing out.